Scully, you turn your, your, your eyes away, your head away for a few minutes. Another cabinet minister has resigned or whatever. What is going on in Ottawa? What's the future shape of the, of the Conservative government? Daniel Prusselides joins us from Ottawa, the, the, the body and the heart of the beast. What's going on there? Well, I think everyone is getting ready for the 2015 election. You're either in or you're out. The next two years, as far as the Conservative government is concerned, are focused solely on preparing for that election. And that is they want to get all their ducks in a row and make sure everyone who has got a cabinet post and who has uh, some kind of real public portfolio is one who is going to be, uh, you know, manning an oar during that election campaign in 2015. Because if you're not going to be in that campaign and if you're not going to be helping the party win the next election, then you're not going to be in the limelight. That's, mm. just, that's just the political reality. Of course. Vic Taves, though, the timing. Now, we think Wednesday will be the cabinet reshuffle and all sorts of names are being mentioned. But Vic Taves has resigned from everything today, hasn't he? Uh, that's right. Well, as of Tuesday, he will have resigned as a minister of the crown and also as an MP. So that opens up his riding just to the east of Winnipeg for a federal by-election. And that means there are three open ridings now. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it all works out in those ridings. Although Provence, uh, Taves' riding is a pretty safe riding as far as the Conservatives go. Yeah. Now, just the other side of the city is it's... it's Candice Bergen, is that her name? Candice Bergen, MP? Candice Bergen, yeah. I, I, always, I always hesitate when I say that, because surely not, but that, that is her name. <laughs> uh, she's been mentioned as a possible uh, cabinet minister, and Manitoba and regional representation, that, surely that plays into her favour. It does play into her favor, yes, for sure, because uh, she is one of the people that has been leading the charge, or that did lead the charge, when it came to getting rid of the federal long gun registry. Yeah. Uh, it was her, initially, it was her backbench... Uh, private members bill that got the ball rolling on that. Eventually, the government took that over, and uh, that's all history now. But she has been at the front of that file, and so she has had a lot of exposure, even as a um, uh, as as a parliamentary secretary to the to the public safety minister. She's had a lot of exposure to the ministry, to what those issues are, and she's taken some lumps in the House of Commons and gotten into the rough and tumble yeah. uh, from time to time. So she's had some experience in that regard. Plus, she can give Harper a few points uh, in terms of all of the politically correct stuff that you got to do when you're making a cabinet or uh, putting a, a woman in cabinet, for example, or making sure that there's Manitoba representation, all that sort of thing. So she has a, a couple things in her favor in that regard, sure. Yeah. And I know politics is meant to be grand and, and glorious and ideology and philosophy, but a lot of it's about visuals. And Justin Trudeau has that, maybe only that, in his favor. Uh, she is a woman in a what? 40s, late 40s perhaps, I don't want to be rude here, attractive woman. Um, there are other younger people, women, Chris Alexander, who is a, a younger guy, all, all of this is the new, to the new face of the Tory party, and I, I think that's what we'll see after Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of that, because if you'll notice that the people who are retiring, who are stepping away, tend to have been there for a long time, like Vic Taves or Diana Blonzi dates yeah. back to 1993, right? Uh, Marjorie LeBreton, now she's obviously a senator, but she's stepping away from her cabinet role, and uh, her low role as leader of the government in the Senate, and she has been there, well, since before any of the current crop of conservatives. Uh, so you're getting a lot of those people leaving federal politics, and they are making room for some of the younger faces. Chris Alexander is one of the people that you mentioned. He does have uh, a lot of experience in some key areas, diplomatically speaking, and sure. on the development side, you know, that side of things, so that uh, he can bring some interesting skills to the table as well. But as you say, really the, the one of the issues that has to be top of mind for the prime minister, and only he really knows, is what is it going to look like? Because for most people, not if you're a reporter watching Parliament Hill pretty well every day, but for most people, what you're going to see of these politicians is 15 seconds, 20 seconds during a television clip, yeah. and they better hope that it's a good clip. Yeah. The, there's always an attack on the Conservative Party and the Conservative government that somehow they don't have the intellectual high flyers. It's never been true, of course. I mean, my God, if you want dead wood and heavy metal, you just look at the Liberal Party. But if you think of Chris, Chris Alexander, Oxford-educated, multilingual diplomat, uh, Dr. Kelly Leach, a real doctor, by the way, a, a medical doctor, people like this in Cabinet, it, it's very much positive for, for the election in a couple of years' time. 
I, I don't think there is really, I mean, to be fair, I, I don't think there's any question about the intellectual heft, if you want to put it that way, of the conservative caucus. And I, you know what, frankly, I, I wouldn't say that any of the caucuses lack intellectual heft. They're not stupid people, regardless I've of... I've met the, a few. Well, no, but I mean, by and large, I don't think that you could say that this caucus is is stupid, whether you agree with their ideology or not. No, I, I, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, maybe you, if you disagree, you can call them misguided, perhaps, but uh, but questioning intelligence, I'm not so sure. You, 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 you would disagree, because I've all... For years, not only in this country, internationally, the assumption of media has been if you're a conservative, somehow you're instinctive, you're emotional, you're visceral, the clever people are the liberals. Right. That has been that has been the media assumption. And it is an unfair assumption yeah. is what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, that the, 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 the parliament is not filled with stupid people. Uh, I, I don't think that that's even debatable, really. They, yeah. they, they may the not deliver be, the best... But not the House of Commons. <laughs> they may not deliver the best spe speech. They may not be all that riveting when they try to make their point. They may have their face buried in their notes, which uh, a lot of people do find annoying, but they're not stupid people. Yeah. No, no. Hey, look, the stupid people, we know where they go, and I happen to, to love uh, watching the <laughs> CBC. Appreciate your time, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Anytime.